previously on the In Doubt Show. So I asked it to write a song about my bald Egyptian friend starting a podcast. <laughs> bald Egyptian friend starting podcast. Oh, oh verse one. <laughs> He's got a bald head and a heart full of gold. <laughs> An Egyptian guy with stories untold. <laughs> He's got a passion for podcasting, a dream in his mind to share his wisdom with the world one episode at a time. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Dude, this is good. It's awesome. This is so good. That's a that good. That is so right. good. That's a hit. Okay. <laughs> Save that one. Do you want the chorus? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, Don't bore us. Get to the, the chorus. You have to, you have to write the song in an yeah. episode. Come up with the melody for this. One, two, one, two, three. He's got a bald head and a heart full of gold An Egyptian guy with stories untold He's got a passion for podcasts a dream on his mind To share his wisdom with us all one show at a time My bold Egyptian friend starting a podcast, sharing his thoughts and his heart at last, with a mic in his hand and a smile on his face, he's ready to bring the world to a All right, Chris, stir the snare up in my headphones. Let's go. He'll take us on a journey through his life and his land. With his podcast, let me tell you folks, he'll make us understand the beauty of his culture and the struggles he's faced, the love that he's found, and the grace he's embraced. My bald Egyptian friend starting a podcast. That's what he's doing, folks. It's quite amazing. Sharing his thoughts and his heart at last. My bald Egyptian friend starting a podcast. Starting a podcast, folks. Sharing his thoughts and his heart at last. At long last, we waited a long time for this. With the mic in his hand and a smile on his face. Big smile, terrific smile. He's ready. But I'll let him in on this, it's quite fine. He's ready to bring the world to a better place. With my help, of course. With my help. I'm a big part of this. He's ready to bring the world to a better place. Yes, I am. I'm ready to bring the world to a better place. A much better place. A fantastic place. It's the truth. <laughs> Welcome to the In Doubt Show, folks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Okay. Wow. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. Standing ovation. Folks. These guys are excited today. Wow. It, Relax. See, it works when you give them a raise, eh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was fantastic. only 1%. Fantastic. Thank you. It was, it was a small Cost raise, of living but, you know, increase. Inflation. <laughs> uh, they are pumped to be here. Thank you so much. Happy Monday, everyone. How's it going, guys? Good. Good. Yeah? We're well, doing Chris, well? well, Chris spoke before me. That's that the first. I know. Holy I, that's smokes, he's excited. Whoa. Chris, how are you? Yeah, that's good. I, I am, I'm good. He looks fantastic. <laughs> one, one of these weeks, I'm not going to be good. I and feel you're going like, to be like, you know what? Are yeah. you going to tell us, though? He's been good every oh, single week. Oh, you're going to tell us. I'm going to bottle so, inside. You're going to bottle I'm good. <sighs> like the Why true Scandinavian that I am. Mm. <laughs> do you know no Sven? Emotion. Do you know him personally? Yeah, actually. Okay, you do. Is yeah. he, is we, he your we went to high school. Okay. We went to high school. Wait, but... <laughs> that episode, the episode doesn't come out. Till, uh... <laughs> Sven, <laughs> listen, I was in a bad car accident in 2016. Stop laughing. Joke's over. I just buzzkill. But 
to bring light. Sven has been a personal trainer of mine and has been helping me. And apparently, Chris went to high school with him. Oh, I thought he, I thought he was just a masseuse, but he's also a personal trainer. He does both, and he's a nerve. He's specialist. a jack of all trades. Yeah, he's a jack of all. He's oh. jacked. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's a good guy. Sven's a good guy. But uh, anyway, okay. so Chris is doing well. Sven's doing well. I'm sure he's busy working mm-hmm. today. Uh, Brendan, how are you doing, buddy? Good man. I got my wisdom teeth out. Oh Whoa. boy, so I got a couple of big holes in my. I get this way. Wait, wait, hold up. I don't know what he's up to. Uh, he has his wisdom teeth. So I got this thing. No. It's called the Monoject 412. I don't know well, what this. That's Whoa. that's like the top of the line. Yeah, yeah. That's like, that's listen, like, listen to this. Listen that's to this. Pass guys. the Commando 450. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Listen to this. Wait, wait, wait. You ready, Chris? Wow. <laughs> Can you record nice. that for a sound oh, bite? It's already done. There you it's go. We got another sound bite, folks. And so what you got to do is put it, fill it with water, and then you got to... Oh, you like, sir, it's like a syringe to like rinse yeah, out the holes? Yeah, to rinse out the holes. You do, like, yeah, oh, you, they're uh, deep holes, so you, a lot of food comes out. You had, a lot, of, you had a lot of blood. He's, the guy sent me an Instagram <laughs> oh, video geez. of just like blood pooling out of his mouth. I'm like, thanks, man. Can't unsee that. How do I dislike Disgusting. this? Disgusting. Yeah, yeah that, was, uh, that was terrible. I remember taking my wisdom teeth out. I was fully awake. Were you fully awake for yours? <laughs> uh, basically, yeah. Yeah, I was awake. I'm I literally... I was supposed to be put under. Did you get your wisdom teeth taken out? Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember the moment? Remember when it happened? <laughs> well, I was, I was put under. Oh, you were put well. under. Yeah. I wasn't put under. I was supposed to be put under, and it didn't yeah. really work, so I was kind of just really high. Yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't put under. I literally... Was, I was, all I remember is Hannah Montana was on TV. <laughs> You get the best of both worlds. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> Let's please move on. Um, Billy Ray, shout out to you, though. Um, so, uh, I, yeah, I remember watching, and then next thing you know, I was gone. But I did see blood squirt all over the ladies' goggles. <laughs> what? And I heard, like, the and like the pressure of, like, <laughs> it was, and then what? all of a sudden, and then all of a sudden, the tooth popped out, and it sounded like, oh, did, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. Oh, um, oh my goodness. <laughs> but uh, he's using that tool for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> it's like, do you even rinse your holes? Nope. I just... Uh, I just use it for the sound. Yeah. I love the sound of yeah. the pop. I've never actually used this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so ridiculous. All the water's getting everywhere. Anyway, so uh, you're recovering well, though, obviously. I know... Uh, yeah, pretty well. Yeah, that's good. That's yeah, good. I had a double sinus closure. Oh. And I had a double infection r- removal down here. So. Oh, man. Super fun. That sounds awful. And uh, we're going to be talking about, uh, speaking of awful, no, not awful. <laughs> speaking of fantastic, uh, we're talking with Santiago Frank about wow. young adults n- loving their neighbors well and mm. being good neighbors. Did you have that is people awful. to love you well when you were stuck at home in on meds? Yeah. Yeah. Well, my family. Yeah. It's important. Mm-hmm. No friend showed up. <laughs> I should have showed up. I feel bad. No, Andrew no. didn't show no. up. I texted him. I sent him <laughs> video of blood pouring out of my mouth and he was like, ew, dude. Get that away from me, and then let me know when you're better. And then he blocked my number. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm just kidding. That was not. What I was said. a bad uh, friend. Um, I can't handle blood. Uh, anyway, enough. so uh, no, let's uh, let's dive into this interview. It's going to be great. I think. Uh, I think honestly, post COVID, uh, when we were um, told for years to just be cooped up inside and we're not allowed to visit anyone, or you know, we really were forced to lock our doors. Um, and I think. I think it's going to be hard for the young adults. I find it even hard personally myself um, to reverse that and go back to an open door policy, Mm -hmm. super hospitable, welcoming of all people. Yep. Um, That two years of, you know, instilling fear and saying lock the door, uh, I think it affected all of us. Mm -hmm. I think even for me personally, like I'm an extrovert. I like to be around people. And I find after those couple of years, turning a little bit more into an introvert. Mm. Nothing wrong with introverts, mm. but I just, I've, I'm, cha- I'm changed. That's not what I want to be. <laughs> no, no, but I'm just, I'm changed. My personality's yeah, yeah. changed and I'm, yeah. I'm a little bit more uncomfortable to talk with people or I'd rather mm. text someone than call them because I just, mm-hmm. and that's just weird because I never yeah. was like a that. sour, bitter old boomer. That's what you are. <laughs> Let's get to the interview. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you know what? We probably should though, because I really have nothing else to say. I'm just, so, I'm just kidding. I'm no, sorry. Donnie. I, re- I repent. We didn't even ask how Donnie was today. No, we're not. We're not good do, friends. Do you, you want to find I out? A, I need a. Uh, do I? <laughs> do we? Yeah, I think we should. Donnie, right. I've right. been waiting. <laughs> I've been holding my breath the entire time. <laughs> I'm doing terrific. You know, what? I wasn't having a good time. I thought you forgot about me. 
And then just something in the back of your mind called called out to you. It's Donnie, it's Donnie, it's me, it's me. I'm still stuck here in this dark room in the back of Brendan's mind. I was waiting to come out, and here I am, having a fantastic time. See you next week. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He's gone. Wow. <laughs> Came and left. Just like that. Just like that. Wow, wow that was a little wild. All right. That now weird. that we got that sorted out. Yeah, that's your fault. <laughs> San Diego's waiting for us, so let's. So that was my fault. You Sorry, folks. Do. We want to make Monday great, and sometimes I feel like uh, <laughs> you're looking forward to Tuesday. All right, so <laughs> San Diego's ready. Let's be serious now. Let's dive right in. All right, we got Santiago Frank. Now, do you ever go, do you ever hear people accidentally call you Frank Santiago? All the time. Okay. All the time. <laughs> yeah, it's like, that's really hard. I, I think I might have even like emailed you a couple of times by accident switching it. And that happens to me all the time too. Andrew Marcus. I always get right. Marcus Andrews or whatever, but uh, it's Santiago Frank and you're all the way in Virginia. How you doing, man? Doing well. Yeah. Happy to be here. Loving, loving life currently. So it's, it's, it's really exciting to hear, be here and talk about this. Yeah, this is awesome, man. Tell us a little bit for the listeners who are joining us on audio or those who are watching. Um, tell us a little bit about who you are, what you're up to, ministry life, personal life. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, so I grew up in Asheville, North Carolina, but here currently in Virginia at university at Liberty University, finishing up school, studying business communications and biblical studies. Um, so it definitely in the college world, but kind of beginning to move out of that. Um, min- speaking of ministry, kind of what I'm up to now is a lot of just normal in the in the church life. So a lot of working with the worship team, um, some writing stuff, trying to um, work out what it means to be a young person, be a college student who's transitioning, who wants to be hospitable while changing in transitions and all of those things. So um yeah that's a little bit about me awesome man and what what's your plans post graduation because you have your your last year right now right yeah so this is my last semester so looking at um heading back to north carolina which is actually is kind of applied to this conversation of um a lot of my um rich community and families in north carolina so kind of wanting to prioritize being around them and kind of meshing my life with theirs so looking at still applying for stuff but looking to do some sort of um, intersection between ministry and business. So whether okay. it's content creation or kind of, um, an ed tech space. So, um, but yeah, lo- hoping to be in North Carolina and doing something ministry and business connected. That's awesome, man. That's so great. Great. Good for you. Um, so you wrote an article, um, recently with, uh, the gospel coalition and I found it fascinating because I realized that even for myself, I'm just just past the young adult life. And I know the guys are probably laughing because they think I'm an old, uh, old fart. Right. But um, I know for young people and for myself as well, especially post pandemic, uh, you know, the art of loving our neighbors well and welcoming neighbors into our home and being hospitable. Um, that's really challenging. It was challenging pre COVID. And I feel like it's even more challenging now because we've had rules to lock our doors and to not love our mm-hmm. neighbors or be in their houses or whatever. So, I'd love to unpack, um, you know, you wrote this article for a purpose. You've seen there's a need. Maybe walk us through some of the things you've noticed and um, some of the tools you give us in that article. Yeah, absolutely. So it it is huge, especially kind of considering um, the pandemic and how it affected, especially this area of of life. And I think a, a big area there is that question with hospitality and with others like, we got used to um, viewing others at, almost as dangerous of mm-hmm. like, oh, I can't be near that person. I can't enter them in my life. And if I do, there's so many implications of that decision. And I think that line of thinking is a lot of what I was thinking in writing the article. And I think it gives something to, we're actually invited into of, it really makes you think about um, the implications of what you're doing in the sense of when I seek to be hospitable to another, it isn't just, it shouldn't just be a, a flippant or simple thing. And I think COVID actually let us see that, that, like the people we choose to be hospitable with, that is a real um, sacrifice and has implications. So I think that's something we can be invited into thinking about. But basically, yeah, with the article, it kind of just looking through three major movements of, I think, 
um, calling young adults to hospitality. And so the first one is kind of associated with um, inward transformation and looking at how we can predispose ourselves towards the love of other, the love of neighbor. Because as um, as we'll get into, like in this generation of young adults, that is something that we're currently predisposed against, I think. Mm. And then kind of moving into the idea of, um, so we have willingness and then we have place. So kind of um, archetypally, of course, that's the home, but it could be a dorm. It could be your friend's house. It could be anywhere. It could be like a park, you know? Um, but that idea of like, where there's this willingness we are called in, into and also this rootedness to a place where we can gather people. And then kind of the third idea is calling young adults towards um, in that willingness and in that place um, towards service of others. And that that consistently doing that and consistently doing that as your real self um, can be a really beautiful work for you and also just for your your community, both in the body of Christ and outside of the body. Totally, man. Totally. That's so great. So let's walk through each one if you want to kind of just unpack a little bit more. So start with that first one. Yeah, absolutely. So the first one was kind of in the article called um, Hearts to Welcome. And so basically, it's it's a bit of a um, a movement in, in the three of kind of moving from inward transformation towards like outward expression of that. And so as I was kind of meditating on, um, you know, what what do I need to hear as a young adult myself? And what do I need to be called into? I think it really started with that um, inward transformation of having a heart that actually desires to love those around me. So in, in one sense, that happens through conversion, of course. But I think in, in another, perhaps more practical to this conversation sense, I think that comes with seeking to commune with God. And as we do that, as we kind of enrich our prayer lives, there, there, I think God, like we can't help but be changed when mm-hmm. we're with God in, in sort of a continual way. And so kind of inviting ourselves to be open to that. Because as we know, and we have the great commandment, which of course is loving God. And so that's where we're going to start. We're going to love God with our time and with our energy. And that kind of moves into the second, which is the love of neighbor. And so kind of posturing ourselves in a place where um, as we commune with God, he changes our hearts, he molds mm-hmm. our hearts. We're actually loving someone that we are not predisposed to love in this moment, or that we just would rather not um, extend the energy to, which sounds kind of harsh, but I think looking at it of, we have our kind of circles in our worlds. And I think God, a lot of times wants to break those apart a little bit. So kind of, yeah, the first one is all about becoming open to, to God and how he seeks to change our hearts in love of others. Man, that's so good. And I feel like that ministers to me a lot because it's so easy to, yes, part of it happens at conversion, but there is this due diligence that we have to do, like something that we have to partake in, which is daily communi- communing with the Lord. And Absolutely. I feel like when I don't do that or I have bad rhythms um, with that, I love way less. Yeah. And yeah. even as you're saying that, I'm just like, oh man, like, oh, I need to spend more time with the Lord because it's easy for me to love the people that, love me or, you know, my family or whatever, but then anyone else that, I, you know, the grocery store or whatever, it's like, I'm just doing my own thing and I just don't care. And mm. there has to be a correlation where loving God and spending time with God overflows into loving others. Right. Absolutely. And I think a, a big core idea there that was helpful for me is like, that's so plain in scripture. I think, I believe it's Matthew 5 where um, in Jesus's sermon, he's talking about, you know, if like even the tax collectors and sinners love, love a friend. Mm -hmm. So the idea of like that as Christians, we're called like basically that that's the baseline. What what a lot of us are kind of viewing as, as love and care is as hospitality and love and care. That is true and good and beautiful, but it is a baseline. And I think there is that beauty of like, the two things of one, okay, this is something that's a lot harder than I thought. And that that in itself, I think, calls us back to Christ in the sense of to actually do this thing that he's calling us to. We need to, we need to have those daily moments of communion and those daily rhythms and practices to actually support this kind of life that he calls us to. So yeah. Totally. And I feel like um that's just ministering to me in a whole new way right now. 
because I feel it's just easy for me to um, not love well the people who, you know, I don't know. It's just, it, it starts, it's rooted in communion, communion with the Lord and that overflows into, so it's not just we love every single person. We love our enemies. We love that just because we converted five years ago. Right. Like that just can't happen. It's like a daily practice. That's so good, man. I really appreciate that. Okay. So what's uh, the second one that you uh, unpack? So the first one is that, that that's their foundation of everything. Yeah. So we kind of start there with hearts to welcome that kind of willingness to even enter into this sort of space. And then I sec- secondly is like a very practical thing of, um, of a place. And so I, I kind of, that's the second bit is talking about a home to nurture. So kind of this idea the core ideas of hospitality is one willingness. And then secondly, a place where you can be nurtured and nurture others. And so I think there's a, there's a few ideas that I think were really cool to unpack here of, and again, especially for young adults, like the immediate thing I was thinking about in writing this was like, I just live in a dorm. Like I just have like, like I don't have a home. I don't have a lot of money. Like all these things that that are um, hindrances but I, th- I think the idea of home to nurture can really be applied to to any place or space that you can gather people. So I think that's important to to highlight. And I think in that is um, two ideas that are really important that within with that space, um, being consistent in in your care for those people that you invite and being very real. Like I think when we think of hospitality sometimes, or how I've thought about it, is like kind of the like a Southern Living magazine or like something where it's like, you know, you have this like perfect pristine place with this like charcuterie board and like all these <laughs> things, you know what I'm saying? But I think I think the reality can and should be a lot more kind of gritty and messy and real where it's like, this is my life lived. And there's things that I have to do and there's things um Rosaria Butterfield in, in her book on this, I think highlights it really well when she says hospitality, um allows us to like have our our schedules and lives be changed and altered but not destroyed. I think it's important where it's like we have there's things that we need to do and things like the laundry or like just like practicalities of life that we shouldn't be afraid to invite people into hmm. that we shouldn't be afraid to invite people to see because that is a blessing to them and is a blessing to us to know that we can offer ourselves to others when we're not perfect and and complete. And also allowing people to see like, wow, this is someone who's working out this question of how to follow the Lord in a se- in, in process, which is huge and important. So those are some kind of like few ideas that come to right, right now on this idea of like a home and a place and a space. Yeah, it doesn't have to be pristine and perfect. We had some people over yesterday and um, thinking about like, you know, possibly doing life with them regularly, like you said, consistent. And, uh, you know, we didn't have all the dishes washed and the counter was a little crazy. And I'm like, oh no, we got to like go beast (laughs) mode. But it's like, they came and they were like, and I'm sorry that it's like, who cares? (laughs) It's fine. You know? And and it, it can be cool too. Like, I think there is a like beauty and opportunity to like invite someone into a space that is, um, you know, nice and clean and all those things, whatever. But I, I think we like, that is our only conception. Hmm. And so I think we like, there are moments in our lives where we can do that. We can provide that. But our, I think the vast amount is, yeah, it's like there's dirty dishes in the sink or like, or even when you think about interpersonally, like, oh, like, I, I guess thinking for young adults, like my, maybe like, my roommate and I just had a fight over this thing and we're like, or like just inviting people into real life, mm. I think is the idea. not of like only doing it when you, when everything is great or when everything's pristine, but like the real quality of life. I wonder what the fear is. Cause I, I agree with you that people want real, they want authentic. They want, you know, I wonder what do you think the fears are for young adults and how do we overcome that? Yeah. Why do we want to look always like we have it together? I guess it's just, I think that's just what we've been doing for, I don't know, however long. (laughs) Right. Yeah. I mean, I think there's this, there's a conception of, I think, I think two, two things come to mind. One is like the, the image or the archetype that we've 
been provided, which of course is different for everyone. But I think in general, typically most of us grow up seeing and thinking about hospitality in kind of um, the first initial way of like with friends in a context that is like controlled and well-designed and all of those things. And so I think there's a, a bit of like a, okay, this is, I think this is how this is supposed to happen, you know? And I think another idea is in our age group um, generation, I, a lot of what we're doing is like we're we're becoming something, right? We're, we're we're trying to actively very much form ourselves into like and asking all the questions of, you know, what am I going to do with my career? Who who am I going to marry? Like all these like different intense questions, and that, I think there's a fear there of of if I, sh- if I show this whole, hmm. if I show my actual life, if I show my whole life, then maybe these, these things that I have, these hopes, these, these people I want to be, maybe people actually see that I'm not that yet. And I think that's scary because a lot of us are in this like big transformational, like every year is like 10 years of growth. It feels like hmm. that there is this sense of we're not, of course, this is through your whole life, but I think it's very felt now. It's like you're not necessarily who you want to be. You are struggling with things that you wish you weren't. And opening that up, you get to see people. People get to see that. And that I think that is that can be scary. Yeah, it's terrifying. Yeah. 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 Terrifying and beautiful when we do it. Right. Because you realize, hey, we're all on a journey. And it's okay to go on that journey together. We don't have to be afraid. Right, which is it just and there is such a beautiful moment of like like I think of just of times in my life where um this isn't super related to hospitality, but it th- th- things like confession mm. like confession with um a good trusted friend or something where it's like you kind of just open it up and then they open it up and you and then for in some weird beautiful way, like there's so much more trust and rootedness and like connection yes. between you because you're like okay, like you see each other and you know each other and you still love each other. And that is so much more beautiful. And the lightness that comes off you when you finally, like I've, I've felt that too, even in the area of confession. Um, And there's a lot of similarities to just being real and opening up. But I remember we did a little, you know, uh, retreat where it was me, our executive pastor when I was working at a church a long time ago, and then uh, another guy on staff. And we just had to like openly confess things. I'm like, I'm openly confessing things to my executive pastor. So in my head, I'm thinking, okay, what should my resignation letter look like? I should probably start writing uh. it. My life is basically over. But um, then you quickly realize when we all start just opening up and bringing darkness to light, I realize we're all imperfect. We're all going through very similar or the same things. Right, And we're in this together as brothers and as sisters. And uh, that was a moment that just creates, like you said, like this this connection, this unity, this lightness, this freedom. And it's like, I don't have to pretend like I have it all together. Uh, no one does. And that's right. okay. We can go on this journey together because no one has it together. And I think even when we think about this for the young adult who's listening or who's watching, um, it's okay for you to be you. And to be real and don't be afraid to open up uh, in these places. And so I love how you talked about just like the place, the space doesn't have to be a home. That's all neat. It could be your dorm room. It could be a park, you know, summer's coming. You can meet outside, like so many places to create place for people to gather. Absolutely. Yeah. That's really awesome. That's awesome. Um, Okay. So, so we got those two, number three. Right. So the third one and kind of the, kind of the, the climax of the journey there is is um, hands to tend. So kind of mm. this idea of we went through a transformed heart, a, a place to to actually do this um, work, and then hands to tend is kind of this idea that hospitality is really really rooted in mutual service. And so kind of the idea of you get to and and how this is rooted. I didn't go into this in the article, but I've been thinking about a lot of how this part of hospitality is so important for the body of Christ and for those outside the body of Christ, because in the body of Christ, we like think about Acts, Acts 2, the end of Acts 2, where you see um, it talks about the early church and how they um, gave up all their possessions. They were meeting together daily. They were breaking bread together. All these things that they're like, 
there's a a bearing of burdens. And I think, especially for young people, but I think just for a lot of us, there is a fear that I can't go all the way in on this Christianity thing because if I do, I'm going to really, really need people. And that is where hospitality comes in. That's where service in the body of Christ comes in, service hospitality. Because when we're all going all in, we're going to really need each other and we're going to really need to mutually bear a burden. So I think that's a, a sense of serving the needs in the body and also as a way to show those who aren't Christians that we're going to be here and we're going to love you and serve you no matter who you are, no matter what you look like, no matter what you've done, no matter what you're currently doing. And we're going to do that continually over and over and over again. We're going to love you into the kingdom. And I think those are two big ideas like crafted out of service where it's like you have a heart that's ready to do this. You have a place. And then now with those two things, you can just serve and you can invite people in. And I think that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Some of my closest friends uh, were formed from just serving in, in the body. You grow so much together. You learn. Um, it's super important. And I think, I think churches and the body of Christ in general, I've always been saying this, I feel like we need to step up our hospitality game a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And so what are, what are some practical things we can leave our listeners with just in the area of, you know, what should I do next? Or, you know, some practical things. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I, so I think the big thing in all of this is that um, there is no need to be or feel like an expert. Like, mm. I'm just a guy who's been thinking about this, that wrote this article, and I'm still like figuring out what this means in my own life. It's like you, you the, the most important thing is just doing something. I think that's like a big thing to take away from this. So it's like, we can get stuck in like, how's the best way to do this? What books do I need to read? What, who should I talk? Even what podcast should I listen to? Which are all helpful. Um, but I think the core thing is take one, one step. And then beyond that, I think um, something that has been very helpful for me is kind of looking at um, practical, just practical skills that you have um, or practical skills you could learn as a way to serve people. Like for instance, um, during COVID, I learned how to give haircuts. So now <laughs> I'll give I'll give like three to four haircuts a week for free, just for guys, anyone that wants to. And so that's a way, that's a simple way for me to um use a skill that I have to get to know someone, to care for someone in a very simple way, to get to know them and and to kind of build a relationship there. And so like kind of looking at skills that you might be able to offer, it could be cooking, it could be um like singing it could be it could be really anything that you're able to invite people into mm. and i think lastly something that's been very helpful for me as i've thought through this began practicing practicing this in my life is that partnership is huge and so whether partnership partnership with friends or roommates or parents or significant other or, or anything else doing this with others is so much more encouraging. It's so much more fun, I think, too. And I think that's how we're going to really do it in the long haul when we have a team around us to kind of to push into this mission. That's great. Because we're not called to do this alone. Absolutely. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Uh, that's so great, man. I really appreciate your time today. And I think uh, we've got a lot of great, uh, great things. Are you going to be writing for the Gospel Coalition more? Or what? how did that even come about? Right. Yeah, yeah. So that was through kind of this essay contest last year that I submitted for. Um, and so I have a few kind of article pitches in that are that are in process currently. So if, if those get through, you might see a few more there, but I'll, I'll let you know if any of those go through. Yeah, that's but. great. That's great, man. Good for you, bro. Well, all the best for your schooling, wrapping up this, going back to North Carolina. Um, and I really appreciate all we talked about. Just hearts to welcome. Uh, just to give a recap, so it just starts with communion with God. That's a huge, that's the most important step. I think yes. everything comes out of that. And I'm learning even in my own life when I don't do that daily. Um, the other things just, they just don't align and I just can't make those things happen. It has to be a genuine coming from that. Homes to nurture, 
like you talked about. And just a reminder, you don't have to have a physical home. Um, it doesn't have to be a clean home. All the dishes don't have to be done. <laughs> um, just a safe, consistent place um, where you can be real. I think that's really great. And then uh, the third one, hands to tend. It's all about being on mission. So thinking of practical skills or giftings or even desires that God's given you that you want to do, uh, do them for the kingdom. And uh, like cutting hair. So did you learn that during COVID? During COVID, yeah. You just thought, you know what? I want to learn how to cut hair. I was like, the time, the time is now. If it's ever gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. Do you cut yeah. your do you cut your own hair? No, that, 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 that would be that, really that, hard. Yeah, right. Yeah. That'd be that's the next level. But <laughs> that's so funny. I always tell my wife Michelle, I'm like, oh, I I think I could be really good at cutting hair. Like I just feel like <laughs> I'd really enjoy it. So I tried it on my right. four year old son. It was like a disaster. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah okay. I, it was nice. I had some. I had some younger brothers who let me experiment on them. So it was that's helpful. so funny. And so you just have random guys that come to your house and just cut their hair. Yeah. So literally now there's like a a group of maybe I don't know ten to twenty guys that I'll just regularly do it for that just come no on by. No way. That's crazy, it. man. And I think it's actually pretty cool because it's like once they're in the chair. And you start. They're there. <laughs> they're there, man. It's like you can start talking about the gospel halfway through the haircut. They can't leave. <laughs> right. <laughs> Absolutely. They're stuck, man, until you're done. And you can take your time. It's free. I, know. <laughs> I give slow haircuts. Yeah. So like, <laughs> <laughs> slow haircuts and just preach the gospel. I love it, man. Well, thank you so much for your time, bro. And I look yeah. forward to hopefully more articles, but uh, all the best to you, your ministry, and uh, your graduation. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Awesome, bro. God bless. All right, that was a fantastic interview for Santiago Frank all the way in Virginia. What yeah. a legend. Um, grateful for his time. Um, uh, what were some big takeaways for you guys? I know the three points that he had were the hearts to welcome, uh, homes to nurture, which I thought was a fascinating one. I'll walk through some of that, and then hands to tend. So for hearts to welcome, I thought it was really interesting that, and it's a good reminder for us today, that everything has to be rooted and founded in an abiding relationship with Christ. The gospel changes us first before we go out and love our neighbors. And one of the quotes in his article says, the gospel makes us a people who have the courage and compassion to welcome our neighbors. And so Chris and I were talking before the red light came on, we were just talking about, you know, Mormons and uh, Jehovah Witnesses and how they go around from door to door. And sometimes I think they're more bold with their beliefs than believers are um, with their beliefs. And I always mm -hmm. think that's really impressive that they're actually you know, going to bus stops and going to coffee shops and knocking on doors. Yeah. Um, but we had a little interesting thought. Chris and I were just talking about this, just this reality that uh, that's more works based. And that's not really the way that we need to love our neighbors by knocking on every single door and telling them to you know, yeah, I've convert. Sort of, I've sort of heard it uh, with Mormonism particularly, but I mean, I suppose that's with any of these religions that do tend to be works based when you drill down to it. And the idea of friending people just to make converts. Right. And then yeah. once it's like, oh, they're not interested, then it's like you don't even know them. They yeah. completely shun you. And mm -hmm. it's like, okay, well, that wasn't true friendship anyways. You weren't you didn't actually care. The heart wasn't there. Yes. It was just a means to the end. Exactly. Um and I guess when you look at those religions, because they are very different than Christianity. I know a lot of people say Christianity and Mormonism and Jehovah's Witnesses are all kind of the same God. Um, mm -hmm. That's not true at all. Was it you who was telling me that like a lot of, I can't remember if it was JWs, um, they just, they do that. They do the door, they do the door to door stuff just to check a box. Like they have to do this. They have to evangelize. Was it you who was having that conversation with? I don't remember. I don't know. I remember. That sounds about right. I mean, and that's like yeah. with the Mormons too, they they all have to do that like two year mission. Yeah. Right. It's very like, works based. It's yeah. Very, it's all works based. Yeah. And I remember actually a couple of uh, Mormons, we uh, went out for a drink with them cause they came over and whatever. And we, well, first we a drink of water. Yeah. So actually fun fact, I took them to Starbucks. I did not know <laughs> that they don't drink. Yeah. No uh, coffee. No, no, mm, coffee. no alcohol. And so I kept insisting, trying to be hospitable, like, please let me get you a coffee. <laughs> And they kept saying, no, I'm like, no, please. Like, no, I insist. And they're just like, sir, 
<laughs> no comment. All right. Then I realized, oh man, I'm such a turd. How dare you? So what did you guys talk about? We talked, you know what? They just kind of shared their story. They kept saying, like, and again, we're very different Christianity and Mormons and Jehovah Witnesses, whatever. So, but he just said, you know, uh, we believe in the same God. We believe in the same Jesus, that Jesus died, that Jesus rose. And I had to stop him. He knew I was a pastor. And I just said, okay, well, a question for you. If we believe in the same God, then why are you trying to convert me? And he was like, well, uh, uh, um, I, uh, um, well, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm like, Joseph Smith. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I said, is Jesus the only way to heaven? He's like, well, no. And I'm like, ah, interesting. Yeah. So there's other ways. <laughs> Let's talk about that. And I just, I just told him at the end, I said, you know what, man? Like, I am so dependent on Jesus's grace alone. Mm-hmm. no matter how hard I work. And I just said, I pray for you because that must be so hard mm-hmm. that you're working so hard and you still don't know at the end of the day if you did enough. Mm. Yep. And I said, I will never do enough. I can't do enough. Uh, but it's the grace of God and it's uh, Jesus only who saves. And so um, I just said, I can't live like that. I can't live uh, in a works-based faith. That's just That's just too much for me. And I know I'll fail over and over again. And so we had a great conversation, prayed with them. It was a really special time, but um, very, very different. And so Mm -hmm. when we talk about this, being rooted in the gospel, abiding in Christ, out of that comes a genuine love for your neighbor, not a checkbox or a, I got to convert this person. Yeah. And you sort of, actually, that reminds me of... Checkbox. uh, Checkbox. Rosaria Rosaria Butterfield, her uh, testimony is rooted in that, like... The I think it was a pastor, or a neighbor who she lived by, and they just opened their door to her and mm. created a real, actual relationship, friendship with her. Yep. And Not for the purpose of an end goal. No, but exactly. But just a genuine, we yeah. love you. Even mm. at that point, she yeah. was like very much at the opposite yeah. spectrum of things with uh, beliefs and everything. Yeah. So, mm. yeah. And I think of my old neighbor that I mentioned a few weeks ago, like just praying for him and over the years, six years, and then gave his life to the Lord, you know, mm. when we, we were together. And um, it's, I didn't love him as my neighbor for that to be the end goal. Mm. It's yeah. just through relationship, it ended up happening. And um, yeah. that doesn't always happen, but it's not, the outcome is not up to us. Mm-hmm. We don't have to love to convert. It's just, we're called to love. Yeah. We don't do the converting. Yeah. We just do the yeah. loving and yeah. we just love like Jesus. And so, um, and it's little things. It's not knock on the door to say, hey, accept Christ. But it's like if someone needs help with their grass or I noticed the lady beside me didn't plow her snow off her driveway and she's older. So plow, like just little things to just love, 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 love. And uh, people will see Christ. And so that was the first one. Second one I thought was really interesting, the homes to nurture. And um, talking through a lot of young adults, and this is a young adults program, not mm-hmm. a lot of young adults have homes, especially in beautiful British Columbia, where it's extremely expensive. <laughs> Come on down um, to my basement suite. <laughs> yeah. If you can afford yeah, it, buddy. <laughs> 3500 bucks. Yeah. Um, $20 but, entry fee. Yeah, exactly. Every person I come. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. But, um, but he just talked about homes don't have to actually be someone's house. Don't feel mm, yeah. stressed. I can't, I can't welcome people to my home because I don't have a home. Well, it could be a dorm room. It could be going to the park, hey, I'll host a barbecue at, you know, at the beach or whatever. It's like we can create safe places for young adults to gather and for mm-hmm. us to love our neighbors and yeah. have to actually have a home. Well, what so. was one of the quotes? They don't have money, but they have time or something like that? Or? Uh, that one is uh, your, yeah, I want you to walk through that one because we were talking about that. That's hands Oh, I thought to, that's what was the, sorry. No, <laughs> no, no. Uh, hands to 10 was the third one. Okay. And uh, uh, the quote is, as young people, we're, tip- we're typically poor in resources, but rich in time. Mm. And uh, you had a little bit of pushback to that quote. Well, just because can we, can time... We go, are we going on to this one? <laughs> yeah, I, think we, I think we should. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay. Well, I was just, just going to say, like, yeah, I, I, initially it struck me like, man, all of my friends are really... I, I didn't... That was me. Sorry. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't initially agree with it because I was like, no, like, I'm very busy. All my friends are very busy. But at the same time, I'm like, they're not in busy. They're not busy with important things. Mm. They fill their schedules because they have free time and they don't like maybe sitting around bored. But that's it's like a, they that's could've. a truth bomb right there. Yeah, Whoa. I would tell you to drop your mic, but it's like four, five hundred bucks. So don't yeah. drop the mic. That's Let's a mic drop. Over. <laughs> that's a mic drop. But we can't afford another one, so don't. Yeah, yeah, they are busy. They're just not busy with yeah the important stuff. Did I just say that? Yeah. So it's like they, <laughs> so they technically could have a lot of time to yeah. love and be in relationship. Yeah. Um, and serve together 
with people. And I know you have a lot of testimonies of just, you know, your life and friendships you've developed just through serving. Yeah. 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 You don't care to share though? <laughs> well, um, oh, there's not much. There's not really much to say, but I know you not mentioned much, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. youth. Uh, oh, I, I serve in a lot of different areas of my church, but it's like, yeah, you, you serve alongside people at, in your ministries and uh, it just makes it that much better. And naturally, um, yeah. um, it's kind of like a no brainer to me. That's why I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I don't have sure. much to say. Like, it's just amazing. It's just common sense. You hang yeah. out with people, yeah. you do life with people. Guess what? There's going to be relationships yeah. built and, and you get a lot out together of it. and you it's get not, a lot out of it. Yeah. 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 It's it, serving can, I hate, I hate to say this cause it's like, actually, I don't even know what, what I'm, what I think about this, but it's like a lot of times like serving should be a one way street, but like there is a lot of, there are a lot of good byproducts. Oh like yeah. You friends. get blessed. Oh, yeah. So yeah, yeah, you get blessed, you get blessed so, so much, so much. I feel like yeah. even when I used to do like travel ministry, I used to tour at different like venues and churches and, um, you know, I'd like lead worship at this place and the people are so hospitable and so loving and so kind. And we spend time and I'm just like, man, I feel like I came all the way out here and only I got blessed. Mm. It's like when you serve mm. and people are serving, yeah. it's just everyone is winning. I think that means you need to do a better job, Andrew. Yeah, I sucked. I did a lot of hit a lot of, hit a lot of rock <laughs> chords. It's a bad a, set, but I felt blessed. It was a blessed. bad set, but I was blessed. <laughs> See you later, suckers. <laughs> <laughs> On to the next one. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but I think what we can realize, though, even just to sum it up, all these points uh, have nothing to do with ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, serving is denying ourselves and loving our neighbor. You know, when we think about the gospel being the main priority, okay, it's about Christ. It's about abiding in Christ. It's about having the work of the gospel transform your heart, change your life, and that overflows into loving and serving others, Mm -hmm. creating a space, a safe place for others. Um, And like you said, it's, you know, as iron sharpens iron, we both both get blessed, Mm -hmm. Um, but it's a, our mentality is a one way, not like a Mm checkbox, and I'm doing this to get something in return, Mm -hmm. like a convert. Yeah. 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 That's huge. That was a really great conversation. And I feel like um do you guys notice personally in your lives um when we had to shut down, everything had to close, and we locked our doors and whatever, do you feel like there's been a change in your lives as far as um how you c- communicate and connect with people? Uh no, not me personally. Like my job wasn't affected. Uh, I saw less people, I guess, but um I still talk to mm-hmm. a lot of people like through Zoom and stuff like that and um yeah, I, I, I like I'm really extroverted. I I feel like I hang out with people more now than I did. Interesting. Uh, so I I'm a bad person to ask. I don't You're trying really, to catch up. Yeah, like it's it was it. Yeah, this sounds awful, but it was like it wasn't that like I guess detrimental to my life. And I'm like I'm hesitant to share that because like I know for a lot of people like it really heavily affected them. So. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I, and I I do feel like, I mean maybe not in that area of your life, but I do feel like the last couple of years has affected everyone in yeah. some way. Yeah, maybe I'm just naive. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. I probably am. Guys, it's probably affected me. He's a disaster. Me. No, I'm just kidding. It probably affected me in some way. I just I wouldn't be yeah, able we just to like don't, pinpoint. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I think it is. It is I found it affected me a little bit. Do you feel like it? Yeah. Um, well, I, well, Chris, with, Chris never saw anyone eating. Well, yeah. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm naturally rather introverted. Surprise, surprise. Well, you got your family. Um, but your family, I know, family life is different, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I know that my wife has mentioned she was well, she's more of an extrovert mm-hmm. but she definitely said like over the last couple of years mm. she's become more introverted yeah, yeah on account of that um and you like you sort of realize that certain relationships we all handled things differently yeah. and you might yeah. have different perspectives on it and i think that probably affected things yeah for sure which is a completely different conversation podcast mm-hmm. <laughs> totally but you know yeah. what introvert extrovert doesn't matter we're called to love yep. mm-hmm. and we can literally all love. And for some of us who were affected, became more introverted. That's fine, but we can still love as yep. an introvert, as an extrovert. It doesn't really matter. So um, we hope you're encouraged today that you're blessed today and that um, maybe there's a couple points that uh, stuck out to you. Maybe there's something that you want to change in your life to be more hospitable. I do think churches and Christians really need to step up their hospitality game, mm-hmm. um, especially in a culture where we're just so busy, like you said just doing so many things, a lot of them not necessary. And so I think it's important for us to step up our hospitality and love well, love our neighbors well, be intentional with our neighborhoods, get to know them, get to know their names, their lives, their stories, not for a checkbox, uh, but just to love like we're called to love. So Mm -hmm. have a great Monday. Uh, That's it for me. You guys are all good. When in doubt, figure it out how. This is an easy one.
uh, uh, love your neighbor. Yes. Ah. <laughs> Nailed it. See you next Monday.